Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, a variety of places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm uh, going to be sharing tonight about another lesson that um, I kind of developed with uh, my student teacher as she was trying to come up and craft a lesson and we talked through a lot of things and I just thought it'd be cool and beneficial to talk through that process uh, with y'all in case you're looking at creating your own lessons or you're just interested in the process or want to sort of see how that goes. So um, I'm going to be talking a little bit tonight about that process of creating the lesson. It's a lesson that includes non-pitched percussion instruments um, and also dynamics and rhythm reading. So uh, that's going to be coming up in just a second. Um, before I get to that, if you hear about anything in this video that you're interested, the poem, the, the process, any of those things, um, you can find the links for all of those things on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. There's also probably a link at the bottom of wherever you're watching, listening to this, where you can go directly there. But if you hear me talk about the links page, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, one more thing. If you're interested in doing um, elementary music ed uh, training in person. Um, I'm going to be at New Jersey Music Educators uh, next week on Thursday and Friday. Come on out. I would love to see folks there. Also, I'm going to be um, at the Augusta Orff chapter that is in March um, on the 23rd. So if you're around Augusta, Georgia, come and join us. Okay, so let's talk about um, this lesson. So this lesson, um, my student teacher wanted to create something that hit a couple different standards. Um, we had been talking about how to plan a lesson, how to craft something together, and some of the ways that you could do that. Um, and some of the things that we'd been focusing on were um, hitting the standards, um, keeping kids engaged, talking about movement so that kids aren't just stationary the whole time so there's a little bit of movement, um, and trying to like weave that all together in a lesson. Um, so that's sort of the, the backstory to where this came from and why we're doing this. Um, and so a couple of the standards that she was trying to hit was um, a familiarity with um, uh, non-pitched percussion instruments, particularly talking about the different instrument families, so scrapers, shakers, woods, metals, um, and membranes. Those are the things she was doing. Um, sorry for my basset hound in the background who's trying to become a part, apparently a staple of these weekly videos. I don't know. She's burrowing in, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, also, this is the first time I've ever tried live streaming on TikTok, so we'll see how that goes. My favorite part about it was that I had to like confirm my age. So <laughs> it asked me to like put in the date I was born, and then it was like, put your face in this scanner, and we're going to try and guess how old you are based by your age. So that was fun and humbling. Anyway, <laughs> I'm trying TikTok live for the first time. We'll see um, if that happens again. So, um, so my student teacher was trying to come up with um, a lesson that included a couple different standards, and the standards she was trying to do were, again, non-pitch percussion instruments, so scrapers, shakers, woods, metals, membranes, to give kids exposure on the different instruments. Um, she was also trying to uh, incorporate, uh, my students have just, in the pacing guide, talked about dynamics, specifically forte and piano, the difference between loud and quiet, um, and they were also trying to uh, do a little bit of, like, um, iconic notation, See, now Lucy's definitely trying to be a part of this video because she's in here coughing. Luce, chill out. Anyway, um, iconic notation following that and rhythm reading. Seriously? Lucy, stop. Okay, anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so, um, basset hounds, unpredictable, pooches. Anyway, so those were the plans of what she wanted to incorporate. So how did she want to do that? So she was like, okay, well, we can do... Um, some rhythm reading and we can incorporate rhythm reading on the instruments and I was like great so how are you gonna is it just gonna be straight rhythms how are you gonna hand out instruments when are you gonna hand out instruments because um, she's at the point in the student teaching where she's been in the room quite a bit she spent um, a full day a week um, throughout the fall semester so that was a lot of experience seeing things we've talked a lot about the process of how you might want to come up with a lesson how you might want to craft that why you would maybe want kids to move or how you want to hand out things so we started um, asking the questions and when I was talking with her about um, uh, coming up with the lesson uh, there's sometimes where there will be lessons and then they will like 
fail or flop and why. And so uh, some of the fun things that you learn from that, like it's good to have a lesson that fails and flops because then you learn like, okay, well, I shouldn't have handed this out right away or I should have waited to do this or I should have introduced this first. Why did... Um, and so the lesson that you're going to see today has had a couple revisions along the way, just so you're not like, wow, David's student teacher, like immediately right away is so great. Well, yeah, she's great. But like we, we had a couple of revisions. So this is like the end, how the lesson sort of turned out. But as we were talking about coming up with lessons, I was like, it's kind of like if you're going to, you know, bake a cake or bake a loaf of bread or something. Uh, you have to have a recipe. You have to plan the steps that you're going to introduce things. You need to figure out when to mix. You need to figure out when to let it rest. You need to figure out. And and some of that, you can just follow the recipe. You can just write out a sequential list of like what you think is going to happen. And sometimes you have to have knowledge. So like, uh, for example, if you're baking bread, if you've ever baked bread with yeast and you're like, oh, it says mix the yeast with water and let it sit warm water how warm well you want it to be warm but not hot if it's too hot it'll kill the yeast how long do you let it sit well it needs to sit for more than a minute i mean like you, you some of that you just need to know and if you don't uh read the recipe well or if you don't know some of that you just it's not you just have to learn over time and you have to learn um through failure and, uh, and or, or learning from asking. So there's the recipe, right? And you know what your end goal is. It's going to be that, that cake or the bread or whatever. But you have to also have to learn along the way, like what are the things I need to do in the steps? But also because uh, there was a time this week where um, my student teacher kept saying, read the rhythm and kids weren't quite getting it. And I was like, they don't know that word yet. And so, uh, you know, you have to know you have to think about your pantry. You have to think before you're going to bake that thing, what do you already have? What do you need to go get at the store? What do you need to, you know, whip up or whatever before you can um, bake or, or uh, create? So I think that's sort of a fun way to look at lesson planning is thinking of it is it, uh, you're, you're making something, you're baking something. What is the process? Where do you start? What do you need? Do you need bowls? Do you need a mixing? Do you need to, do you need to preheat the oven? You know, all of these things you need to think about. So um, the lesson that we came up with, um, we talked about a lot of those things and it's evolved over time. So what really inspired um, her was uh, one of the things I said as we were looking through, you know, what can you teach? What do you want to teach? Because you're teaching this grade next week. What do you want to do? Um, and we talked about, well, here are some resources and here are some things you might use. And one of the books I shared was Mallet Madness by Artie Almeida. Great book. Um, and she was looking through and looking at different lessons. And one of the ones that stuck out to her was this lesson on aleatoric music. Um, and she just really liked this picture. And I was like, hmm, aleatoric music isn't really in the pacing guide right now. Um, but, <laughs> but she had also looked at it because it talked about timbre of woods, metals, and membranes following the conductor going through the line. She's like, that's a cool picture, but like how can we change that to make it work for what I wanna do? Um, and I was like, okay, Great question. So we looked at the picture again, which is sort of a, a loopy, swoopy line, sort of a swirling line. And along the line are little rectangles or triangles or circles or whatever um, along the course of that line. And I was like, that's a cool idea. So like if you kept, came along the line, if you drew a line, you came along the line and as you're, you know, you come to like a, a shape, a circle, a square, a rectangle, uh, one instrument has to play. But what are they going to play? And she was like, ooh, this is great. They could play a rhythm that we create. Awesome. Okay, so the, the beginning idea is there's going to be some sort of line or swoop or swoosh or something that you could follow with, you know, a laser pointer or, you know, one of those big pointy fingers or whatever. And whenever you get to one of those images, then you could play a given rhythm. I was like, great. Okay, so um, what rhythm are you going to play? Huh, okay. And I was like, so we talked about there are a couple things you could do you could have a pre created rhythm like you could just have like rhythm cards right that you throw up or show up or what you know, throw up on the board or show to students or whatever um you could do that or um and then we talked about creating your own rhythm so uh using like stick notation ta's and toddies um i have these little magnet um there's a back on it it's really for like a photo it's like a picture it's a little, little plastic sort of picture frame but it's it has magnets on the back so i have a bunch of these um and so i use them sometimes for rhythms they're just stick notations so there's rests um there's taws quarter notes there's toddies eighth notes um and then for older grades there's uh 16th notes takadini so 
Um, with a bunch of these, you could very easily, you know, put these together and then move them around however, whenever you want to do um, like a four beat pattern. That would be easy. And I was like, then each time you have them read, you could change it if you wanted. Um, you could have a kid come and change the rhythm. That'd be a cool thing to do. Okay, great. So that was our plan. So it was like, you're going to follow the line. And then when you get to that little image, um, someone is going to read a rhythm. Okay, great. And eventually, hopefully get to non-pitched instruments. So the first time we did it, well, the first time she did it, um, she had them go along the line and um, she handed out instruments. And the first time they would got to a little thing, you know, certain kids would play or whatever. And it worked Okay, and then it was like, how do they rotate through the instruments? Well, she kind of had a plan of how she would rotate one line to the next or whatever. Um, but how could that work better? Okay, so we were like, well, what else could we do? Um, okay, so in my classroom, I have four lines on the floor. Um, and I use them all the time for folk dance. It's just like four par uh, parallel lines. One is red, one is blue, one is green, one is um, yellow. And um, I use them for classroom management. I use them for... Um, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff, um, especially folk dancing. That's really nice. But kids can sit on them, right? So um, sitting on the line, uh, working in those spots, um, you know, one line, what we thought was instead of just having icons, instead of just a triangle or a circle or a square, or whatever, why not have kids sit on three of those lines, three of the four lines, you know, the green, the blue, the red. And why not have like the triangle be red and the circle be blue and the square be whatever the third color was, I didn't quite say. Um, let's see, hold on. Okay, it's really fun trying TikTok Live for the first time. Um, and having fun, like um, never had spam on there before. That's cool. Anyway, so uh, what if the circles and things were, um, were colored to match the colors in the room? Uh, Sorry, TikTok's being weird. First time doing this, it's fun having trolls. Hmm. No, anyway. Okay, so um, so when the kids would get to a triangle, it would not just be a triangle, but it would be red. So then you'd know all the kids in the red line would do the rhythm. Okay, and then when it gets to like the blue circle, or whatever, all the kids who are blue um, or on the blue line would get to play a rhythm. Okay, great. So we also talked about how handing out the instruments the very first time worked fine but what if when you taught the lesson um, the first time you went through it you just did clapping or patting or just reading the rhythm um, instead of handing out instruments right away which got loud fast uh, instead why don't you just read the rhythm first um, and so then kids would also get a chance to try out the like know which line is theirs before they had an instrument in their hand so they then when they when you did add instruments into their hands they would be able to already know the process of okay when i see the green triangle i gotta play my instrument or whatever um, and so it'd make it a little bit um simpler in the process once you've handed out the instrument okay great so let's try that and so then i said okay so you want to add a rotation yes well the rotation one one day when we tried it was really loud i was like what if we added a poem so that when they got to the poem, you could, or when they got to the rotation, you could just say the poem. They would know, oh, this is the time when we're going to rotate. And then they would rotate to the new instrument and we would try it all again. Great. Okay. So that was going to be something that was added in, um, which by the way, I'm going to get to the full process of the whole lesson, like front to end in a minute, but I want to talk through this process of how it was created. Um, then, you know, so the plan was, okay, there's this winding line, there are different shapes along the line, they're color coded to match the colored lines um, in my room so that kids knew exactly when they were going to play. Then, um, as we're going along, we're going to read rhythm and the kids, we could move, change, create these rhythms as we wanted using the movable cards with the magnet backs on the whiteboard. But the one more thing that she wanted to do was dynamics. And I was like, okay, so how are you going to do that? She's like, well, they could play loud or quiet on their instrument. Great. Okay. So if they're going to do that, how are they going to know to do that? Um, and we played around with uh, making the images large and small. We played around with um, adding an F or a P onto the image uh, to identify that it is forte or piano. And that's kind of where we ended up. So um, let me take you through the lesson then how she taught it. Um, and you can sort of see the images we use and see the process 
that we used. It's going to take me a second to get this uh, image pulled up so you can sort of see uh, what I have been talking about. So let me flip over to uh, this image. Hold on, Instagram. Let me try and flip you around here so you can see a little better. Okay, sorry about the ring light. Okay, let me see if I can flip uh, TikTok around. I don't know if I can do that. Can I do that? Mm. I may just have to turn the camera around like old school because I don't know how to flip. I have not played around with this. Mirror your video. Oh, there we go. Flip camera. Okay. Sorry for this, everyone. It's the very first time I've tried doing this on TikTok. Okay. And maybe the last because they're like trolls. Anyway, okay. So, um... So on the screen, hopefully you can see, um, there's the, the bl light blue line is the line that kids would follow. So we would follow, you know, like with the cursor or whatever, whoop, um, with the cursor or whatever, or, or you know, using a finger, you know, we'd go through um, and kids could um, read along the line. So the very first time, purple was everyone. Gr the green square was the green line kids. The blue circle was the blue line kids and the red triangles, the red was the red line kids and I um sh we put up a rhythm ta 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 di ta or whatever on the side of the the whiteboard next to this image so when the cursor or, or the counter or whatever got to the purple all kids said ta 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 di ta when I got to the green only the kids on the green line when I got to the blue only the kids on the blue line when I got to the red only the kids on the red line and then purple again to end um was everyone then um so that worked pretty well. We did a couple of practices of that with different rhythms, things like that, so that kids knew um, they could uh, play when they play. Oh my gosh, I even said the thing about the poem and I forgot to tell you what the poem was. We pulled out um, a couple books, we looked online, found a poem um, about the ocean that was pretty short, pretty easy, um, that kids could do. Um, it goes like, this is the sea, the wavy sea. Here is a boat and here is me. Um, and it's, I've linked that on the links page if you're interested. It's just a quick, simple little poem. I actually looked it up. It is a song that it, if you're from Australia, I'm so sorry, because I know that it's like a song that I think is semi-popular, but we definitely don't sing it <laughs> or use the rhythm uh, from the poem from Australia. So I'm very sorry about that. Okay, so um, this is the, the line they would do. And once they did it, they would say the poem and rotate around so that you would move basically to a new instrument. Then we handed out instruments. So we did it once with rhythms, not saying here, we're going to use instruments. We did not mention that at all. Um, we just um, did it as a rhythm. They didn't know instruments were coming. Well, then instruments came. Um, wood instruments went to the purple or to the green line. Metal instruments went to the blue line and shaker instruments went to the red line. So uh, instruments like wood blocks, uh, tone blocks um, for the woods, metals was a go-go beds, a go-go bells, uh, Gonkokuis and ooh, I can't remember the third one maybe a triangle I can't remember another one and then shakers there was a shaker a there were shaker eggs things like that um, that we used so then as we went you know using a little pointer um, they went along when it got to the green the green the green line which was woods played and then red was shaker instruments on the red line blue and then through and through and then purple was the end and we did a couple different versions of that the line kind of changed um, so, you know, it'd be a different order or whatever, but kids had to know, you know, when you play, what do you play? Um, and then we'd say the poem and they'd rotate. So they'd get another chance at that. Here's another example, just another line. Um, this was something that she created on her iPad, uh, using a, like a sketching program. Um, and we played around with it a little bit. So it was easy for the kids to see on the board and easy pretty much to follow. But again, just when they went through, it was either, you know, up at the board with your finger or a yardstick or whatever. Um, right now I'm using the accessibility feature on my iPad to show you the little floating dot thing. Um, but you could use, you know, a laser pointer. You could use your actual hand, what, like whatever you wanted to show where you were in the, um, on the line. So as you're going through. And actually, I think that, you know, I think that she developed a little repetitive uh, pattern. She said, she, so the green kids would be like, ta di ta ta di ta follow the wave, and here we go, and the next one. So it really was not aleatoric in that, like, whenever the dot got there. But that was because they were, you know, saying a rhythm together, so they kind of had to have 
a phrase to get them started so you know like you could be like ready ready here you go you know so they all start together um but she said like follow the wave and here we go or whatever um you could do since it's like an ocean theme you could say whatever you wanted okay so then um we did one where um this was a little different after the kids had had several experiences playing the instruments on the different with the different colors with the different images then we did now on the screen are some triangles that are very small and some that are very big some squares that are very small some are very big same with the hearts and the circles and the different colors this is like a, a precursor to doing loud and quiet just not naming that, just not naming them piano and forte yet. So when kids went through, when they got to the very large purple heart, everyone played whatever rhythm we had given them. Ta di ta di ta ta. But loud. Then the next time the next one is a small blue circle. So then whoever's on the blue line did ta di ta di ta ta. But very small. And the red ones, ta di ta di ta ta. So each um little symbol you got to was small. Then the next time we actually labeled uh, oh, here's another example of small and large, different images. Um, but eventually, oh my gosh, here's another one because they, they rotated. So they got to do uh, loud and quiet on every instrument. Then we labeled with um, the symbol for forte, just a letter F or a P for piano. Um, and so they went through and they got to have experienced that where the large, we had named it forte and piano, and they got to go through and play. Again, this was with non pitch instruments. So they got to do it within reason. You know, you can only play the wood block so loud before you are breaking eardrums in people's ears. Same with cowbells and a go-go bells and whatever. So we said, yes, it's loud within reason. And then the very last one, and this is my favorite, um, all of the images are the same size. So the heart, the square, the triangle, the, the circle, they're all the same size, except some are labeled with a P and some with an F. So now instead of giving them the image, like a large image to show loud, it just is the label. So now they have to really know F means forte, which means loud. P means piano, which means quiet. They have to know that because if they're going to play correctly, they have to read the label, they have to know it's their turn, um, and they have to be able to play loud or quiet. Again, with whatever given rhythm we did. And all of our rhythms were either quarter notes, eighth note pairs, or rests. So this became a really interesting lesson by the time we were done that they had to know when they played, it was playing in small groups. We were identifying whether they could play the rhythm correctly and we were identifying whether they were playing loud or quiet. It really built up. I mean, the very first thing they had was just icons on a line, right? Just a few icons, like three or four. And then it was, you know, each group got to play twice and then they got more involved. Um, and so as you went though, um, the icons then went from just a bunch of icons, just playing a rhythm to large and small icons. So they play loud or quiet and then labeling with the F or the P. There are several examples of that. And then finally, no large or small icons, just labeling with F for forte, P for piano. Okay. Let me see if I can turn this back around and I'll talk a little bit about how it went. Okay, Let's see if I can turn you around Instagram, sorry. Okay, so the lesson went honestly very well. Like by the time we're done, by the, <laughs> the last time uh, we did it. The first couple times though, because it was a brand new thing and because it never really been tried quite like this, it was interesting and every time um, she'd finish the lesson. I'd say, great. How did you feel? What did you like about that? What did you think you could maybe change? Where did you find that there were parts that were so much fun? Where did you find times where you were stressed or kids seemed like they didn't quite know what they need to do next? What can we do to simplify? How can we, um, you know, how can we make this more elemental, more simple, more exciting for kids? What, what do we need to do? And so it, it, it changed quite a lot over the, t over time. It was like the first time, uh, there was just a line with, uh, square circles, triangles in just like random colors or all the same color, something like that. And after that first lesson, she was like, they weren't quite knowing when they needed to do it. And I was like, as I had saw her teaching that lesson, I was like, why don't you make the different images, the color of the line they're sitting on? And for both of us, it was like, oh my gosh, yes, why not? So then the next time it got a little bit easier. And then um, we add, we just tweaked, added things along the way. I was like, I think that you could do a few more examples. So she made a couple more slides of different, uh, you know, swoops with um, 
images in different places. And it just evolved and got better over time. So that as, as we were doing it, the lesson got more intricate and more interesting and more chances for kids to explore. Could you do this with a different level? Absolutely. Could it be for younger kids? Totally. Could it be for older kids if you change maybe the, the rhythm, added like 16th notes or something? Absolutely. Um, do you need the little poem in between? No, but was it f a fun and easy thing? Yes. And kids, once they learned that the poem meant rotate, as soon as she said, this is the sea, the wavy sea, they all started speaking and they all started switching and they knew which way they needed to rotate by the time we got there. I think it became more successful when, when we decided, okay, we're going to try the rotation with reading the rhythm and following the map without instruments. The, the first day we did it with instruments right away, not good. Uh, but the second day when you did it without instruments, it was so much easier and so much better. And it was very fun because by the end of, now we're at the end of the week, um, we sat down after, after my student teacher taught that lesson today. Um, and I was like, how's it going? How is it different from when you first taught this lesson? Um, is it what you wanted it to be? Is it assessing the things you wanted it to? Is it teaching the things you wanted it to? Is it reinforcing the things you wanted it to? Um, and it, it it's really shown uh, both of us a lot um, and has given some really great um, moments for kids to try things and explore and have fun, but also reinforce a lot of the concepts. And it's also really taught my student teacher um, some of the things about how when you craft a lesson, what does that look like? How do you have how do you have to, what do you have to know ahead of time? What do the kids have to know? It's been a really sort of a cool process. Anyway, this is a, just, it's a new lesson. If you want to try something like this, if you do try something like this, please leave a comment and say like, hey, I tried a version of that and it worked really well, or um, that was cool, but I didn't want to use the ocean poem. I'd rather use a, you know, a poem about the jungle or a poem about bedtime or whatever. Um, please leave that in the comments or send me an email at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com to let me know like, hey, I tried that, but I did this thing differently. Um, it'd be really cool. Or I paired it with a book. Um, you could, there, there are a lot of cool things you could do if you want it. Okay. Well, that's all for this week. Um, I hope this gave you some ideas that you could use in your classroom if you wanted or gave you some thoughts about um, how you could do a lesson similar to this. Um, if you want to hear more, there are a bunch of old Musical Monday videos for the last like five years. You can go back and see more if you're interested. Um, or you can check out my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. There are a lot of things there too if you're looking for more lessons and more ideas. Or you can um, come and join us at New Jersey Music Educators next week. Um, I hope to see a lot of folks out there. If you um, are listening to this, watching this, and you see me at New Jersey, please come say hi. I know like two people there. So um, I would love to meet people um, in person. Come and say hi. Okay, that's all for this week. I'll see you all next week. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.